My name is Arzan Fatalizade, and I'll be presenting on the use of functional lumen imaging probe technology in peroral pyloromyotomy. The authors of this study have nothing to disclose. I will begin with the review of gastroparesis and the POP procedure. Gastroparesis is a functional disorder of the stomach characterized by delayed gastric emptying without a mechanical obstruction. The peroral pyloromyotomy, also known as the POP or g -POM procedure, is an endoscopic technique used in the treatment of gastroparesis, which has demonstrated symptomatic improvement in 70% of patients, as well as objective improvement in gastric emptying studies. There has been, however, to date, no objective way to measure the extent of myotomy that is performed in a POP procedure and the correlation to symptomatic outcomes. The POP procedure has been demonstrated to be both safe and effective at improving patient symptoms with an improvement in the gastroparesis cardinal symptom index from 3.8 to 2.4 and objective improvement with gastric emptying studies. Functional lumen imaging probe technology uses impedance planimetry to characterize the geometry of cross-sectional areas. A flexible balloon containing a conductive medium is used. It uses AC voltage measurements made between pairs of electrodes to create a topographic image that reflects the shape of the balloon and measures the cross-sectional area diameter and distensibility index. The catheter is a thin catheter containing 16 electrodes spaced 5 millimeters apart in an 8 centimeter balloon. In previous studies, the flip technology has been employed to demonstrate an increase in the gastroesophageal junction diameter and distensibility after a poem procedure for aphalasia. The image presented here demonstrates an example of the topographical image demonstrated by flip technology. The bottom portion of the image shows the amount of fluid injected into the balloon. The numbers along the right bar show the range of diameters measured via the balloon with the highlighted number demonstrating the diameter at the narrowest point of the balloon. The purpose of the study was to determine the safety and feasibility of real-time intraoperative functional lumen imaging probe technology in patients undergoing a POP procedure. This information could be further used to determine whether increased pyloric distensibility correlates with improvement in the gastroparesis cardinal symptom index and gastric emptying studies. The study was performed in a retrospective review at a single academic referral center. Patients with medically refractory gastroparesis undergoing POP procedures with flip technology over the course of a two month time period were enrolled. Gastroparesis cardinal symptom index score was obtained prior to the procedure and one month postoperatively. If a, a four hour gastric emptying study was performed prior to the procedure and three months postoperatively. This table demonstrates the elements of the GCSI with a range of symptoms measured on a scale of zero to five with five being the most severe. The symptoms measured range from nausea and vomiting to bloating, as well as fullness and early satiety. This image demonstrates an example of the results of a gastric emptying study. A small amount of radioactive material is ingested with food and the progression of the substance is tracked out of the stomach over time. A four-hour exam is the, gold is the gold standard. During the study, the flip procedure was performed by passing the thin catheter into the pylorus. The flip catheter may either be placed with a standard upper gastroscope, whereby an endoscopic grasp grasper is passed through the scope and used to grasp the balloon tip alongside the scope. The catheter is then advanced with the grasper under endoscopic guidance through the pylorus. Alternatively, the flip catheter may be placed in a through-the-scope manner, whereby the catheter is passed through the channel of a therapeutic video gastroscope with a 6 millimeter working channel into the pylorus. For ease of catheter placement and manipulation, we opted to predominantly use this technique. A 240 centimeter catheter with an 8 centimeter long balloon was used in all cases. The flip balloon was stabilized and it was inflated to a fixed volume of 40 cc's in all cases, which has been shown to be the optimal volume for evaluating pyloric sphincter contour. After waiting at this fixed volume for 30 seconds, the median cross-sectional area and diameter distensibility were measured at the narrowest part of the pylorus as represented on the topographic map. The POP procedure was then performed in the standard fashion. A diagnostic endoscopy was performed without passing the scope through the pylorus to reduce tissue trauma. A submucosal blood was created two centimeters proximal to the pylorus on the lesser curve, followed by two centimeter transverse mucosotomy. 
a sudden mucosal tunnel was created, the pyloromyotomy was performed, and the mucosotomy was closed with clips. Immediately following the pyloromyotomy, flip measurements of diameter and distensibility were again performed in an identical fashion to the initial assessment. Out of 14 patients, there was technical success in performing the POP 100% of the time and 86% of the time in performing the flip procedure. This technical success was limited by catheter malfunction in two patients. The mean operative time was 36 minutes, the mean length of stay was 0.7 days, and no patients had any perioperative complications. The results demonstrated a statistically significant increase in mean pyloric diameter from a diameter of 13.9 to 15.3 millimeters. Likewise, a statistically significant increase was noted in the mean distensibility index following the procedure. The GCSI score showed overall improvement in addition to an improvement in the objective gastric emptying study. The technical considerations and limitations to the study include a small sample size. Additionally, the catheter is thin and may be disrupted with overmanipulation. Also, although 40 cc was found to be appropriate for using the pylorus, it did appear to cause some dilation and trauma to the pylorus in patients with a tight pylorus due to their disease process. In conclusion, flip technology can provide objective measurement of the improvement after POP procedure in real time. It may be employed to further predict outcomes or guide myotomies in patients. Additionally, the distensibility index and diameter improvement may be predictive of and correlated with symptomatic improvement and clinical success. I thank you for your time.